Good day, you wonderful people. I see you. Thank you for coming back to the YouTube channel with your host, as always, Mr. Thomas Hanley. Today, I'm coming at you with another autism dating video. And today, today's topic, it's going to be autism shutdowns. How to understand what it's like, what it looks like, all that kind of juicy stuff. And also, of course, the most important thing, how to help and how to understand it in the context of a relationship. Oh no, I've still got the audacity thing up. Terrible. But before we get into this lovely juicy little video, I'm going to have a sip of my new protein powder. It's not sponsored, it's not it's not sneak, even though there's a sneak logo on this. And it tastes satisfactory. The things I do, the things I say, to make the muscle every day. So you're coming on to this video, you're perhaps knowing what a shutdown is, but perhaps you do not. The funny thing about autism shutdowns is that it's one of the least known about things to do with autism. You have the big, shiny, glamorous meltdown that everybody knows about, even through memes or just being a parent or just being an autistic person. But the old shutdown doesn't really get as much attention as its counterpart. But why? Before we get into the video, I just want to bring your attention to this little scale that I've got going on in my head. I'm going to try and explain it. So basically, most autistic people are alexithymic, meaning that they struggle to understand, categorize, and notice emotions. So this leaves a good 60-70% of feeling an emotion that is very, very difficult to notice. So if we take the typical example of anxiety and perhaps overload, for the for a good 60 to 80 percent of that, I keep going up in the percentages, um, you don't really notice that. And there is a very small window between not noticing it and having a shutdown. So this means that shutdowns are quite common. They usually precede a meltdown. So you have the whole not knowing and you have a small window to kind of notice something, do something about it. Then you have a shutdown. If that doesn't work, then you have a meltdown. Obviously, it doesn't happen like that each single time, but there does seem to be somewhat of a trend um, when our emotions get too out of control and we can't regulate ourselves. So what exactly is a shutdown? Well, I'm going to try and explain it from my own personal experience because... You know, the, the most interesting part <laughs> is trying to understand what it would be like for you. If you're an autistic person, you may not know about it. And if you're the partner of an autistic person, it may be very difficult to get your mind in their head and really understand what's going on. Shutdowns are usually characterized by a very, very heavy amount of dissociation. Now, what is dissociation? If you have not experienced it, if you don't have mental health problems, um, you probably won't experience dissociation a lot. But one of the surefire ways to know what dissociation is like is to consume everyone's favorite recreational legal drug, alcohol. Alcohol is dissociative in nature. It tends to make you feel a bit out of your body. Um, you, you kind of feel like the environment around you isn't particularly real. And that kind of incorporates two of the main types of dissociation that occur for me when I'm having a shutdown. Derealization, not really feeling like your surroundings or life is real. And depersonalization, not feeling like you're real, feeling like you're viewing yourself in a third person view. And the, the reason behind this, the reason behind this high level of dissociation, it's because your brain <laughs> getting overwhelmed by something or feeling a really strong emotion, it's kind of a breaking point. And in a, in a way, the, the shutdown is a way for your brain to stop you having a meltdown. You detach from your thoughts, so you don't think very much. You don't process a lot of what's going on around you. You may become uh, selectively mute or just mute in general. Uh, very quiet and very unresponsive. 
you may also have a, a significant drop in your le- your your non-verbal sco- social skills. So that means facial expressions, body language, uh, tonalities tends to be um, down-regulated in a sense. So you're not as expressive as you usually are. Very monotone. A lot of the a lot of the shutdown basically happens inside someone's head. So there's not a lot of effects on the outside world. Unless you have a romantic partner or you have a friendship or you have a family member or you're in a compromising public position, like at a very big social event, that's when the problems tend to come in because it's not the actual shutdown that's the issue. Sure, it doesn't feel great. It's not very fun. doesn't lead to you being very productive. And you also feel like a bit of a downer. Uh, You're on a little bit of a downer after you have a shutdown. Not as much as the meltdown. But it's still it's it's still not pleasant. The real the real issue comes in when you have people who don't understand what it is. What does it look like? I mean, I've kind of gone over what it looks like uh, just from explaining my experiences. But you may you may find that when you are having a emotional discussion, uh, if your partner is very burnt out from the day, uh, you're having an argument, uh, something where They have to put a lot of thought into what they say. If there's a lot of emotions going out, going up in the air, it can be quite hard for us to to manage that. For me, I tend to be a bit of an emotional sponge. So if someone's not very happy with me for a long period of time, and it's a very intense emotional discussion, it's going to make me have a meltdown or it's going to make me at least have a shutdown if, if that continues and I don't have a break. So let's go over some of the scenarios that may occur. Obviously, the argument is a big one. When someone's in a neurodiverse relationship, uh, particularly autistic, neurotypical, non-autistic, there tends to be some level of crossed wires when you when, when you're talking about something important to them, and you know the, you know they may have had a hard day, but they just go completely mute and they don't respond to you or they give you very short answers and that they don't look like they're engaged or they they look spaced out and you're wondering why why are they being so rude to me how like how dare they just not reply to me it's so rude it's so horrible sure that may happen at some point but if they are going through a shutdown this may explain that behavior when it comes to trying to help someone who's having a shutdown or when trying to avoid a shutdown it's better to avoid the things that will make it worse rather than do the things that will make it better so that brings us on to the 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 how can you help part the most important thing as i said don't do the wrong things (laughs) if you can see that they're getting quite dissociated they're not being as communicative they're being quite short even though you you may be feeling a lot of feelings and you want to explain and you want to get a lot of a lot of your thoughts don't pressure them to communicate the shutdown is a protective mechanism to prevent them having a meltdown it's semi-voluntary so it's kind of like there is a part of you who you you know you feel okay right i'm overwhelmed i'm just gonna let myself just stew a little bit in, in my own brain and dissociate and perhaps feel a bit better but it's another part of it you know it's kind of kind of needed for the situation because meltdowns are, an, are not a fun experience at all. The pretty horrific experiences, just in in general, as a general rule, they're not the most fun thing in the world. Apart from if you're having a happy meltdown, I've had one of those. I've got so so happy, and and just feeling so great that I had a meltdown over it. Very strange experience, but um, let's move on. So if we were to avoid the things not to do when someone's having a shutdown, the pressure to communicate, the emotions, they're not giving them a break, not understanding their increased processing time to, to understand what you're saying. What are the things that you can do to help? The number one thing that you can do is ask them. If you are in a relationship with an autistic person and they don't know what a shutdown is, maybe the next time that they have one, 
or you know once you've explained to them you've shown this shown them this video once you've explained to them what a, a shutdown is and they can they can, they have a picture of what it's like then the next time that they have one if they do have one they can write about it they can think about what it felt like what led up to it what helped what didn't so you've got a good idea of what kind of state they're in what they can and can't do and what you you can do to try and help in that situation perhaps the best you know port of call is just if you're having a quite a heated discussion something quite emotional and perhaps a bit confrontational then maybe it might just be worth taking a breath and just saying okay you know we're not getting anywhere with this at the moment you seem like you're quite stressed why don't you you know why don't we lower the lights in the room? Why don't we put on some of your favourite music? Perhaps get some of the stim toys that you like out. Uh, perhaps um, go out and go outside and just just try and chill out and be in the the nature the nature thing. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of different things that would that could work, but it's very individual to the person. Of course, the the bog standard things things to do would be to stop having the conversation for the time being which can be a very very difficult thing to do <laughs> depending on the situation so that's all the information that i've got for you today and um, i hope this has helped shutdowns are a very strange phenomena and it's not really that known about so if you know as i said if your autistic partner does not know about shutdowns Maybe encourage them to do a bit of reading into it. And if they don't want to, then obviously you can. And I hope that this, these, these little tips and tricks for both noticing, understanding what it's like, and also trying to help someone having a shutdown. I think I said that right. Possibly. <laughs> so if you want to stay up to date with any new autism related dating videos coming out, Make sure to stay subscribed to the channel and click the little notification bell. It really does help out a lot. And of course, if you want to stay up to date with all the wonderful work that I'm doing, I'm not putting on YouTube because I'm a strange creature. <laughs> I have my Instagram account up right here. As you can see, the lovely picture of me looking... I don't know what that is actually, but the social medias... Instagram being the main one that I tend to focus on. Anyway, I hope that you have learnt about the wonders of the shutdown. The pre the the little brother of the, sh the meltdown. The kind, preventative brother that kind of talks you down. Doesn't, doesn't quite agitate the older brother. You know, it's... You know, the shutdown's cool, in a sense. It's, it's a good thing. But you do tend to feel a bit down afterwards, even even so, you know, exposure to that level of stress is quite difficult sometimes. Um, so make sure you control your stress levels, take some Omega Freeze, go out for a walk.